Okay, so our next topic is moles. And when I say moles, I do not mean, you know, the thing on your body or the little animal in the ground. A mole in chemistry is simply a number, much like a dozen. What is the number associated with a dozen? Twelve. Okay, so a dozen means twelve. Well, a mole means 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So you can have a dozen eggs, you can have a mole of eggs. That's going to be a whole lot of eggs. All right, so times 10 to the 23rd is going to be a huge number. Imagine moving your decimal place, sorry, 23 times that way. But it really is specifically a counting number reserved for atoms or molecules. You could, I guess, refer to eggs, but that would seem odd. And this is Avogadro's number. We'll see how it relates to the periodic table. So we've already learned this, that in atomic mass units, we're going to count a proton as one, one, and electron as zero. So if I want to know the mass of chlorine in atomic mass unit, it would be 35. Just look on your periodic table and you round the mass. Okay, that's fine. I know I've got a combination of 35, either protons or neutrons combined. But what is an atomic mass unit? Is that a weight you can hold in your hand? Can you measure atomic mass units with a scale? No. When we use our scale in the lab, we want to find mass. What does our scale read? I heard it. Grams. Grams is our common uh, mass unit, or kilograms. Um, but grams is much more common Um, it's our much more common mass measurement unit. And moles allows us to relate to grams. Okay, so take a moment and look at a periodic table. The one I just gave you, or look at the wall. All right, Shandini. What is the mass? Well, I'll just kind of go through the top. What's the mass of lithium? Seven. Seven. Okay. Now, I need to make my question more specific. Shandini, what's the mass of one lithium atom? Your answer is still right. Seven, seven but seven what? Seven. No? No? AMU. Yeah. AMU. So, you got to listen to the question carefully. If I say, what's the mass of one atom? Okay, first of all, I realize if one atom, that's incredibly small. We certainly wouldn't say it's seven grams. That's like seven paper clips. Definitely not that heavy. So, one atom would be seven AMU, seven atomic mass units. Now, AMU again, that's, you know, seven AMU, how small is that? That's hard to conceptualize. It's just really small. But if I asked you instead, Chandini, what's the mass of one mole of lithium atoms, meaning not a dozen lithium atoms, but 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd lithium atoms, the answer would be seven, but this time it's <laughs> If I ask you the mass, it's going to be the number on the periodic table. But you got to listen to my question to see whether you want to put AMU on it or grams. All right, we're getting the hang of it. If I say, what's the mass of an atom? You say AMU. If I say, what's the mass of a mole of atoms? Then you say grams. Listen. What's the mass of an atom of carbon? Twelve AMU, very good. Kennedy, what's the mass of a mole of carbon atoms? Twelve grams. Okay. Great. So that is the purpose of the of a mole is to associate with the periodic table and be able to use uh, the mass unit grams. Okay. Now I know you love dimensional analysis. Oh, wow. 
These are shorter. Follow, follow with me. Shh. Keep the compliance to a minimum. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Shh. Some of these will be short enough that you can do in your head. Some of them will be a little bit longer, but really not too long. Uh, all right. So how many atoms? When you are asked how many atoms or molecules, that's your clue. Your answer is going to be what? A big number or a small number? Okay, I know atoms are small, but how many at numbers of atoms in something? A lot. Okay, that's going to be a big number. So how many atoms are in three moles? A lot. A lot. It didn't specifically say, you know, of any certain element. That was irrelevant. Just how many atoms are in three moles of anything? How many eggs are in three dozen? 36. Okay, so that's sort of the same question. So for dimensional analysis, you write down your given. And here's one of the nice things with dimensional analysis and mole problems. The number one always goes with mole. So wherever you're writing the unit of moles, put a number one there. One mole, I know, is equal to what humongous number? There you go. So this, this was, uh, this was dimensional analysis. We write down our given number. We multiply by fractions. Fractions that equal one. Well, any fraction equals one. Remember, if the top equals the bottom. So, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is equal to one mole. Oh, wow. Just like I could put one dozen on the bottom and 12 on the top. So this cancels out my unit of moles. And since I know I'm looking for an answer for numbers of atoms, that's got to be a huge thing. And you can do this one in your head. Three times six. Well, or Three times two. Six. <laughs> and... Since I just have to do it, it would be nice if this were in proper scientific notation. Okay. 10 to the 23rd or 10 to the 24th? 24th. Leading number is going from 18 to 1. 10 to 24. Good. Leading number gets smaller, x one gets bigger. Okay. Not too shabby. Horrible. Awfully painful. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna this slide at least. All right, Alan. All right, now we're asked for a mass question, or we're asked a mass question. What's the mass of three moles of sulfur? It didn't say what's the mass of three atoms of sulfur. It says what's the mass of three moles of sulfur. So our unit answer to be in what? Grams, good. So ideally, we're going to end in grams. All right, what is the mass of three moles of sulfur? So three moles is the stuff I'm given that I know. Three moles, S for sulfur. 96 How did you do that? Wait, why did you put S? How in the world? Just for sulfur. Okay. She multiplied by the mass on the periodic table. Well, again, with dimensional analysis, I'm given three moles, so I want to get rid of the unit moles. Of course, the unit moles goes in the bottom over here. And since I said the one always goes with moles, put a one in front. So three moles of sulfur, we're going to multiply by the mass of just one mole of sulfur. What's the mass of one mole of sulfur? 32. 32. Round it, round it. Right. Yeah, we'll always round. 32 grams of sulfur. That's not too bad. Jordan did it in her head. So you just multiply that. And our answer is? 96. One mole of sulfur is 32. So three moles of sulfur is 96 grams. Yes. All right, Will, your question this time is sort of the backwards of number two. It says, how many moles? 
do you have? And 24 grams of carbon. So I'm going to write down 24 grams of carbon times fraction bar. But now, what is my relationship uh, with grams of carbon in moles? So look at your periodic table, Will. What's the mass of one mole? Twelve grams. So which goes on the bottom? Moles or gram? Very good. You want to cancel out grams. So twelve grams of carbon on the bottom, and one mole of carbon on the top. So these cancel. These cancel. And what's your answer got to be? Wait. It's multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and divide. So two. Moles. Uh, two problems we had to finish. We had done practice problems dealing with just one atom at a time. But now we're going to deal with compounds. And this will relate to our lab with chewing the sugar out of that piece of gum. Because sugar is, of course, a compound. Sugar is not one specific element. Um, so how do we deal with moles and grams and AMUs uh, if we're dealing with compounds? Well, what's the mass of six moles of CO2? You still want to start with the given. So I'm going to write six moles CO2. Time sign, fraction bar. So that was my given. You always start by writing that down. And I want to cancel out units on the bottom. So whatever units I have here, moles of CO2 should go on the bottom. And one of the nice things about doing dimensional analysis here is that the number one always goes with the mole. One mole is a relationship we should know with something. Now, OK, what we know about moles is that it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. But did this question ask for atoms or molecules? No. Ask for the mass. And it technically did not um, ask for AMUs or grams, but simply the fact that they're giving us moles of something should tell me that we want the answer to be in grams. So I want to turn this into grams of CO2. The questions I just asked you guys about, OK, if you have one mole of beryllium atoms, that's going to be nine grams. How do you do it for a compound? If you have carbon and a couple oxygens, how do I know the grams of carbon and a couple oxygens? Well, you simply add them up. So what is carbon's mass? 12. What's oxygen's mass? 16. 16. Very good. But I have two of them. That's what the subscript means. It goes to the number or the, the element in front. So just two oxygens. So I'm going to say 2 times 16 and add that all up. So, all right, 2 times 16, 32, plus 12, 44. All right, so one mole of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. And yes, gases can have mass, certainly do. Um, carbon dioxide would be heavier than air, so that would be easy to measure anyway. I looked up... Yeah, I looked up the match, the mass of each element. Good job, Will. Are you adding or multiplying? Adding. So you do 16 times 2, that's 32. Now, why did I multiply there? Because it's 2 oxygen. Yeah. Okay. And then plus 12. Okay. All right, so now I'm done. Now I just need to go ahead and multiply what times what? 6 times 44. 264? Thank you. Ta-da. Not too bad. Yes. Very bad. Really bad? 
So, yep, that's it. You do 6 times 44, and then integrally you should divide by 1, but we don't need to do that. All right, now number 5. You might want to put a little star by this one. Now, this one is grams. The reason why you should put a little star by this one is because this is like the calculation you're going to do for the lab. This is a calculation I should see in your lab report. Except in your lab report, I'm not going to be asking about carbon dioxide. I'm going to be asking about sugar. Isn't that like 16 atoms in the group? What? Yes, not 16. It's three elements, but there are a lot of atoms in that compound. Anyway, okay. So number five, important one to know: How many molecules are in 88 grams of CO2? No. Molecules, molecules and molecules. One molecule, one molecule will be one carbon and two oxygens bonded together. So how many molecules are in 88 grams of carbon dioxide? That should be, just reading that question should be a clue that the answer should be huge. If it ever says how many atoms of something or how many molecules of something, it's going to be a huge answer. So as soon as you're thinking huge answer, you're thinking Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So that should fit in here somewhere. But let's start by just writing down our, our given. So we got 88 grams of CO2 times fraction bar. What should go on the bottom of that fraction bar? Good. The unit we're trying to cancel out of, CO2. And that's one now. The one goes with moles. So it doesn't say moles, but we know that that's our relationship. Our relationship with the periodic table is between grams and moles. So this time I'll put moles on the top. So one mole on the top. Which is really the same relationship I had here. So one mole of carbon dioxide is how many grams of carbon dioxide? 44. Oh, okay. Same thing, same thing. So I took the mass of one carbon, the mass of two oxygens, added all up, 44. Um, but I'm not done. That does not answer my question. If your question was how many moles is that, you'd be done. In fact, how many moles? Two. That is two moles worth of carbon dioxide. But I'm going to keep going. So now I know I've got two moles worth, and I know one mole is that huge number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So you do need just one more fraction bar. And what unit should go on the bottom? Moles. moles. CO2 or moles of whatever. And one goes with the mole, so hopefully that's helpful. Good. And then one mole of carbon dioxide, I could have said is 44 grams, but I don't need that relationship anymore. One mole of anything. It's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing. In this case, it's going to be molecules, not atoms. This is about as hard as it gets. Follow me on this one. Yes. All right, so you're going to want your calculator, maybe. Well, what was 88 divided by 44? Two. two. And you can do that two times that number. Let me 12. Wait, wait, you get 12 for that? Well, because I knew this part was going to equal two. So then I just did two times that. But yes, Ms. Cunningham loves proper scientific notation. So we're going to make it 1.244 times 10 to the leading number gets smaller, exponent gets bigger. Um, I probably wouldn't take off if you made it that far. 
You got you didn't technically get the right answer here. Okay, so this bell work obviously has nothing to do with moles, but you do need to know how to do percent error for your mole lab report. So I did want to go over this one quick problem. Um, the percent error in the mole lab report, what will we be finding between? Like what did we calculate and what did we know for sure? It wasn't the moles of sugar. It was the grams of sugar. You guys calculated how many grams of sugar went a stick of gum and then we read the nutrition facts and we saw how many grams were actually supposed to be in a stick of gum. So you can find percent error that way in your lab report. Here's just a different value or a different example uh, dealing with density. But you always have a measured value or some experimental value and a known answer, what it should have been. So this was the density of lead. It says it was experimentally determined to be 11.11 uh, grams per centimeter cube, but we actually know it to be 11.34. So what's their percent error? Well, if you just plug in. A few of you asked about negative signs. If you get a negative sign because well, you're subtracting a larger value. What do you do with that negative sign? See them two lines outside. Yeah, what, what do them two lines mean? Absolute value. Good, you're going to take the absolute value. So don't worry about a negative sign. Uh, is this and so you'll do this, you'll do this little math. This formula is in your lab notebook. But for the mole lab, I do want you to give me a percent error uh, on the amount of sugar we thought it was in a piece of gum. All right, and then, so, you know, simplify that, and then times 100, and stick a little percent sign on there. But, of course, you know how to make a decimal percent anyway, just by moving your decimal two times. So this gives you, what, was like 0 0.02? 0 0.023? 0 0.0202? Alright, so you get 0.0202 times 100. So your final answer is what percent error? Yeah, and you can put 2.02 .02 or... Alright. There you go. And stick your little percent sign on there. So, that's pretty good. That's a really small amount of error.